My name is Mike Wall, and I'm passionate about exploring health. Come on a journey with me across Newfoundland and Labrador as we learn about wellness here at home. For a lot of us, pets are our family. And I've had pets throughout my whole life, so I can completely understand. They give us unconditional love, and they're always happy to see us. And they're taking an increasingly more important role in our day-to-day -day life. And I wanted to see whether this is a new phenomenon or something that's always existed. But I'm a scientist, and I like facts. So I got a hold of Dr. Carolyn Walsh, who actually studies the bond between humans and animals, so we can find out exactly what's happening between us and our pets. Who's our buddy? This is Chase. Chase is my 10-year-old Papillon. Right on. Well, you've got like four dogs, right? Four Papillons. Yep. So you've got a big connection with animals your whole life. Yes, yeah. I've always been uh, uh, someone who's had dogs in our family since I can remember um, as a young child. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I think that really, you know, enriches my life for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And you decided to dedicate your research at MUN to this exact topic. Yeah, so I started off as an animal behavior researcher, um, and I actually was doing research with seabirds. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was doing that, I started to have a family myself, and it became really difficult to um, do field work with small children. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for an opportunity to kind of switch species and to study other issues, you know, or, or topics in animal behavior and human behavior. And um, we decided to start looking at dog behavior. Mm -hmm. And so um, with a colleague and other students uh, at Memorial, we fo formed what we call the Canine Research Unit, mm -hmm. which is our lab or collaborative as we call it. And um, we kind of went from studying mostly dog social behavior to really expanding to human animal um, interactions mm -hmm. and not just dogs with other animals as well. Right, so is there actually a connection between animals and humans? Oh yeah, for sure. So there's lots of data that, that are coming out or studies that are coming out from um, plenty of labs now um, that are really looking at um, you know, what the basis of that connection is with um, our animals, especially the animals that live with us, right? Mm -hmm. Our domesticated animals. Um, and some of that's a physiological basis. So we know that you know, we can create these physiological connections if you want when we're bonding with animals and they have particular physiological responses as as we do, um, as their people. Um, and you know, if you have a strong bond with an animal, then you know, people are often very much happier, report mm -hmm. being happier. Yeah. That's right. I mean, how do you actually measure it? Is it through reporting? Or? Yeah, so, so the, in, in terms of our research, we've run the full gamut. So some of the stuff we've done has been physiological, where we actually use saliva samples from dogs and from mm. people mm -hmm. to investigate you know, hormonal changes cool. in yeah, dog owner relationships or, or situations. Um, so hormones like cortisol and oxytocin, which is the love hormone. And we've also done a lot of more qualitative work or we're starting to do more qualitative work, um, but you know, trying to get at owner the types of um, relationships that owners have with their pets through surveys and questionnaires, those kinds of things. So it goes both ways, I guess. It's not just a benefit for the person, but the animal. Yeah, benefits yeah, them. yeah. So I mean, that's our hope, right? I mean, so we always want to consider the animal's welfare in all these relationships, and you know, really good ideal relationships exist out there where everyone's benefiting. And but it's not always. I always want to give the balanced picture that you know sometimes there are challenges in terms of owning animals as well that right. people may not anticipate and you know that can impact the welfare of the animal also. Right so I mean a lot of your research it, you, you've, you've also experienced it so obviously I got lots to learn like what are the things I should keep in mind and where should I start? Well I think you know you really want to keep in mind that people have different experiences so I think talking to as many different people who have different types of relationships with their animals would be a great place to to start. Maybe someone at a you know a retail shop like maybe the dog house downtown. Right on. Well, actually, no faith in the crew down there, so oh, that's probably yeah. where I'll go next, actually. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all your information with us. Oh, really appreciate welcome. it. It's been fun. Nice to meet you, Chase. <laughs> Good boy. It's amazing that we can actually quantify the bond between humans and animals, but not everyone gets a chance to talk to a researcher, but we seem to know this inherently. The next question is, why are people getting so many pets these days? Well, I took Dr. Walsh's advice and went down to the doghouse to chat with Faith. Kind of 
figure out like why pets are such an important part of our lives and animals in general. Like you talk to pet owners all day long. Why do people have pets? I think mostly people have pets for companionship. And a lot of people, uh, you know, get a pet. They're like, oh, if I get a dog, I'm gonna get outside more and I'm gonna do more walking, get more active. People just, pets are, you know, they give us unconditional love. So there's never any judging from pets. <laughs> and uh, people just find out it's a, a comforting, comforting uh, feeling to have someone else there with a little heart and four little feet. Yeah. And even two little feet, birds, it can be any kind of pet. Yeah, right. I mean, and you hear about it now, like dog moms and dog dads, people are really into it. But it yeah. does take a lot of work for people. Yeah. Like. Is it worth it for most people? I think it's 100% worth it, but you have to put in the work mm. for the animal. You know, you just got to do that training. Training is a wonderful thing because no one wants to be around an animal that's just not uh, doing its part mm. in, the, in, in public places or even in your home. You want them to be, you know, a happy dog. Yeah. Right, a happy but also healthy. I think we sometimes don't yes. think about like our pet's health because that makes a huge impact on how, their quality of life, but also ours. Like when you invest in your pet's health and their wellness and their happiness, does it sort of reflect on you as an owner? Do you get more out of it? Oh, absolutely, 100%. If you're giving the you know perfect nutrition, I believe in that. It keeps the dog healthy and happy or the cat healthy and happy. And that then you you know reap more benefits and mm -hmm. you don't have to be taking the dog to the vet. The dog is happy, the cat's happier, you're happier. Okay, so I've had pets throughout my life, and I know you can develop this really deep bond with them over time, but one of the things I'm trying to experience today is like, how do I develop that instant connection with an animal? I know a way that you can. We have one of our favorite customers is Stella with the RNC, who helps them with all the trauma cases, and she just instantly goes in there. She's a little ray of light and helps everybody become more calm, and it just is a, it's a great interaction. Why did Alec G. Henley care so much about the financial well-being of his friends and neighbors? Why did he spend his days traveling on foot and by coastal boats to teach hard-working folks how to plan and protect to invest in their futures? Alec's family believed that the best way to weather uncertainty was to help friends and neighbors. Over 75 years later, with a history of independence, Alec G. Henley lives on. In the trusted advice we give, the freedom we grow with you. It's time to change how we view healthcare. We're leading the charge in global med tech innovation, saving lives, bringing millions in investments, and creating hundreds of jobs right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Want to get involved? Visit bounceinnovation.ca. I'm Sarah Cole with Hickman Select, and at Hickman Select, we offer all makes and models. We even have as traded pieces priced under $15,000. We also deliver anywhere in Newfoundland, including Labrador. Visit us at hickmanselect.ca. So now I know for a fact that pets are good for our health. They give us company and improve our overall well-being. But animals are good for more than just companionship. Sometimes they do things that people can't. So I went to the RNC to visit the police dog, Stella, who acts as a therapy dog for the officers to improve their mental health. I wanted to see workplaces, even ones as stressful as law enforcement, that are using these animals to help reduce the stress of their workers. So I contacted Sam Burke, who runs a wellness program at the RNC, to find out more. Hey Sam, how's it going? Hey Mike, good, how are you? Good man, where are we sitting right now? So we're in uh, Stella's Wellness Corner. So this is a, uh, a region within our, our headquarters here to allow people to come in, decompress, unwind, relax after a stressful and busy day. So what does Stella do? So Stella is a part of our uh, support dog services program here at the RNC, and she does a ton of different things. But primarily, her main, uh, her main role, her main function is to assist with the critical incident response, critical, critical incident stress management uh, following tough calls for service, uh -huh. and uh, some of the challenges that our folks face on a daily basis. Right on. So if something really bad goes on, and it's super stressful for people, Stella's there to help. How does she help? So basically, it's just by her, her presence, really. I mean, there's a ton of literature, a ton of research to support the fact that animals, simply by being present in certain situations, can help people a significant degree. So whether it's lowering blood pressure, you know, assisting with their stress response, just by petting them, touching them, having them around, uh, can help out with those stressful situations, those high, uh, high pressure types of events. So that's basically what Stella does. She goes into the area, uh, she assists with our, our, our folks, our police officers, our civilians, uh, to just be present and help them decompress and unwind after those critical incidents. 
So Sam, besides your role here, you're actually a trained occupational therapist. So you try and make workplaces better for people. How does this play a role? So as an occupational therapist, I'm constantly looking for strategies to allow people to uh, you know, get back to function, to, to be able to reach their goals. And Stella, she is ultimately uh, you know, something at our disposal to be able to do that for people in an effective way. So a lot of people have pets at home, but having a pet at the workplace, especially like a communal pet at the workplace, how's that different for people? Well, I, I like to draw my own experience for that. So I have a dog at home. And when I get home after a busy day, walk in the door, the dog is there just to greet me and just, you know, happy to see you. And it just kind of helps with kind of cleansing yourself of the day, like all the stress, like everything just sort of dissipates away. And Stella really does a similar thing in the workplace. Um, so, you know, again, like people walking by, poke your head in, just take you out of that moment, just come in, see her, and you get that same type of experience or feeling that you would get when you go home at the end of the day and see your own pet. That's awesome. You get kind of the best of both worlds. You get a dog at work and you get a dog at home. Yeah, it's a good mix. So what are some of the reactions from the officers to Stella being around the office? I mean, like, it's uh, it's just great. I mean, people just, you know, you can see that it lifts their spirits. It just kind of takes them out of that moment. It gives them a great opportunity to decompress, to unwind, to relax. And whether that's in response to a particular incident or just simply walking down the hall and seeing her and they poke their heads in, a smile on their face, it's, it's great. That's awesome. Is there any officers I can chat to about, like, their experience with her? Absolutely, yes. There's uh, there's tons of, you know, police around here, so I don't think you'll have any problem tracking anybody down. I saw a couple of familiar faces. I saw James earlier. We used to row together. Maybe I'll track him down. Hey, James, how are you, buddy? Hey, Mike, good to see you. Good to see you, too, in your work clothes at that. Oh, yeah. I'm used to seeing down at the pond. I know, it's been a while since we've seen each other down there, hey? I know. I know you're really big into health and wellness, and you know, you're know you helping here with a lot of different things, but one of the things that you guys are doing is mental health. I just met with Stella and Sam. Tell me about her role and how she interacts with uh, the police officers. So you know what? Uh, when you become a police officer, this profession, you can never truly be prepared for the scenarios and situations that you walk into on a daily basis. Yeah. So, you know, really understanding mental health and how we have to care for it every day uh, has become crucial here at the RNC. And, uh, you know, we continue to take strides to uh, learn more about how we can explore resources, including support dog services and how that can change the way we do things. You know, when you look at support dog service, I mean, it's another way to break down barriers and to uh, not just assist our employees, our civilians and officers, but also their family. Well, it's interesting. I think police dog, I think about like, you know, sniffing out drugs or assisting officers in their duties. But I mean, Stella really just works with people one on one and their families. Like, how did they how do the officers respond to that? Like, what's the feedback? You know, it's it's a progressive approach for a police service to bring in an animal uh, but to see that exploration ongoing here at the RNC certainly builds your confidence in the safety and wellness program. And, uh, you know, you look at support dog service and how it's evolved and Stella is now a fully operational therapy dog. I'm really starting to understand how animals can take us out of our head and put us more in the present moment. Probably a lot more like they live on a day-to-day -day basis. So we've learned that animals can offer us companionship and they can heal us. But in some parts of the world, people have relied on animals for their way of life, but also their survival. To meet demand for a high quality supply of the best seafood on the planet, Quinlan is always investing and innovating in new ways to lead the industry. It's Quinlan Quality. My insurance agent is telling me about my aggregate limit. And I think that's when there's a car crash and they pile up on top of one another until there's so many that the company's like, there is no way we're covering this mess. And stay out. Like these guys, obviously over their aggregate limit. Good for you. What? What did I do? When it comes to insurance, we'll talk to you in language you'll understand. I don't have the time. I wish I had more energy. Where do I even start? All right, guys, that's enough. Let's get back to it. Let's go, guys. Got this. Three, two, one. Hurry. Start where you are. This is your wellness journey. Before the invention of the snowmobile in northern communities like we have in Labrador, people used to rely on dogs for transportation. So I reached out to Scott Hudson from Northern Lights Dog Sledding to learn more about this traditional way of life and to try it myself. It's something that I've always wanted to do. The history of dog sledding goes back, you know, right to the very beginning of Labrador. 
so when the first Aboriginal people arrived in Labrador, uh, the Inuit people, uh, they brought sled dogs with them. That's how we survived. You know, everything that we do today with cars and trucks and airplanes, anything motorized, you know, my ancestors would have done with the dog team. So, you know, hauling firewood and, uh, you know, going hunting and all, all the survival requirements would have been done by dog team. And of course, the skills and the knowledge and the ability to use those dogs was also passed down. Um, so, you know, within my family, uh, dogs have been in every generation. You know, I'm hoping that uh, Leah here will, will uh, take this over one day when, uh, when I'm no longer able. So, uh, you know, dog sledding goes back right to the very beginning within Labrador culture. Uh, do you think you can show me how to do it today? We can give it a shot. Actually, can't wait. Let's go. All right, I haven't even gotten dog sledding yet and my mind is blown. This isn't what I picture when I think of dogs. These huskies are not your typical pets. They're born into it and they live for it. So we've set up the sled, we've set up the harnesses, and the dogs are really eager to go. But before I let 10 dogs pull me through the Labrador wilderness, I'm gonna need a lesson. So this, this here is your main concern right here. This is your brake. Okay. While we're on the trail, you want to always know where your brake is and you always want to know when to use your brake. Right. The other thing is to, to remember is that you want to make sure your leader keeps that line tight. Okay. So your leaders are, the dogs are going to be in the front. So watch your leaders. Your leader's name is Torngat. 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 Easy. So if Torn, just like the mountains. So if Torngat stops or if he slows down and the back dogs keep moving, yeah. you want to put your brake in, okay. slow your sled down and yell Torngat, up, up, up. Okay. That'll keep your line tight and that'll keep everything straight. Right on. Other than that, you're just going to be standing on the runners. It'll take your cross country skiing. So you're just here like this, yep. holding on with the with your hands, and the dogs take care of the rest. That sounds that, that sounds fantastic. That sounds the, very user friendly. The dogs are in a nutshell. Oh, wow. Okay, let's <laughs> we'll see how I do. I can't believe I'm doing this right now, I'm getting pulled through the wilderness, completely relying on a team of dogs to get me through it safely. Now I've always experienced loving relationship with animals in the past, but this feels completely different than before. It's a sense of pure trust that me and the dogs are sharing right now. People used to travel like this for literally hundreds of years. It's a form of connection that I never thought was possible. I could really get into this form of transportation. So I'm like, how was that? That was amazing, man. It's Thank fun, you so eh? much for oh, having Oh, no me problem. There. Our pleasure. It was amazing to rely on the dogs because we were pretty far out, eh? Well, it gives you that feeling, you know, of being a moment in nature, a moment with the dogs, and relying completely on your, on your team for survival and getting back to your destination. I'll tell you, I definitely felt one with nature. Uh, it's a lot more cold up here <laughs> than it is in town. It's a little chilly here, yes. Why don't you come on and get warmed up? Awesome. Here we go. Well, it's nice and toasty in here. Oh, what's that? <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's After that nice long, experience. cold run, it was nice to get in, in, in where it's warm. Yeah, that was an amazing experience. I got to say, like... Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, it was a trip of a lifetime. Good, I, good. I've always wanted to do that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I was wondering, like, you've got 13 dogs. 13 dogs. So, I mean, how important is the relationship with dogs and you and, and, and their team? It's extremely important. I mean, my relationship with the dogs is a, is a historical one. It's a cultural one. It's a historical one from the perspective that there's never been a generation in my family without sled dogs. Mm -hmm. My father had dogs, his father had dogs, his father had dogs, and right back through the years. Of course, his relationship with his dogs was a bit different than what mine is with mine. His relationship was that of survival, right. actual survival. He would have been gone in the country for days on end, uh, you know, hunting and trapping and gathering firewood. Everything we do today with motorized vehicles, ATVs, snowmobiles and trucks, my dad had done with his dogs. Right. Uh, but that instilled something in me, you know, to, to, to want to have dogs, to understand more about dogs and to keep that culture alive. 
So my connection with the dogs is certainly from a family perspective, but it's from a cultural perspective as well. So as an indigenous person, it's important to me, you know, we often hear about how indigenous cultures are losing aspects of our identity. And for me, for the Inuit Métis people, sled dogs and dog teams are integral to who we are. It's integral to our history, our culture, our survival, our very identity. So, you know, there's you know, pieces of our culture that we can't probably hold on to for, for, you know, for various reasons. But, you know, we often hear about um, indigenous rights and I believe in indigenous rights but with rights become comes also responsibilities and for me owning sled dogs taking care of sled dogs sharing the sled dog culture not only is it my right but it's also my responsibility as an indigenous person right. well I, I really appreciate you sharing that culture with me today it was it's something I never dreamed out I actually do well, I'm glad you enjoyed it and you do you love the dogs you got a great relationship with them it seems like they they totally listen to you as soon as you say something they'll they all turn in attention I hope I hope that they do I mean I you know, I, I love my dogs, and I often get asked the question, you know, do you love your dogs? And I do love my dogs, but I don't love my dogs the way that someone loves their pet. Mm -hmm. I don't love them in the terms of that pet relationship. I love them for what they mean to me. I love them for what they symbolize to me. Mm -hmm. I love them for the historical connection. I love them for the cultural connection. And I love them because they allow me, they allow me the, the ability to stay connected to who I am as an Inuit Métis person. That's why I love my dogs. You know, and they're just like people, right? Yeah. Some work hard, some is along for the ride. Yeah. Some <laughs> like to grumble and fight, and some are goofy goofballs, you know? Yeah. So they are just like people, but understanding sled dogs and working with sled dogs, you kind of work all that out. You know what team they got to go on, you know what position they need to run in, who's yeah. the leader, who's the wheel dog. So after 18 years of doing this, I've, you know, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I've learned a little bit in 18 years, and I still continue to learn every day. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's like a family history for you and your family, but also for the animals themselves. Uh, for the animals, animals themselves, and for folks like yourself that visit the area. Yeah. You know, I take a lot of pride in knowing that, uh, you know, people walk away from experiencing Northern Lights dog sling. You know, be it a very small bit, but it's still a bit of the history and the culture. Because, you know, I, I like to not only get people on the trail for the hands-on physical experience but to give them a little bit of history as well so people yeah. have an insight about what these dogs are what these dogs were and what they are today and why they're so important to Labrador. Our connection with animals is a lot deeper than we think. They give us company, they give us love, they can rehabilitate us when we're hurt and we can even rely on them for survival. It's a level of connectiveness I never thought existed but won't forget anytime soon. So I guess the only question I have left is what kind of pet should I get?